the scriptures talk is going to make about you a blessedness whatever stage that child, happens that when man you to attain. whose delight you. is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And God, he meditates day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Give him all the praise. Give him all the thanks. Father, we honor you. Lord, we bless you. To Jesus be all the praise. To Jesus be all the honor. Are you thanking him for the diverse manifestations of his word in the midst of his people? Go ahead and bless him. Father, we honor you. Unto the God that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. From everlasting to everlasting, you remain God. God all by yourself. God in the midst of your people. Now ask him for an encounter tonight. I have come to receive. I have come to rise in the spirit. I have come to be imparted with wisdom. I have come to know and learn the ways of God. Are you praying? The Bible says, For everyone that asketh, receiveth. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Do us good tonight, O oh God. And we pray that Jesus will be revealed yet again, glorified yet again, exalted yet again in the midst of his people. Let your word come with power. Let it come with grace. Send someone's word to him tonight, O oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray that everyone who is here, all who are connecting from across the globe, that no one will return disappointed. Amen. For in Jesus' mighty and matchless name we have prayed. Amen. Give Jesus a big hand clap and please, you may be seated. God bless you. You're welcome. This is Koinonia. Hallelujah. I sincerely welcome everyone. Um, it's always a joy and Across the globe Zaria is also connecting blessings to you in the name of Jesus Christ I want to specially thank um, a great man of God that we have in our midst Bishop Macanto from the upper room Cathedral in Yola thank you so much for the time the Lord honor you in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah and every other person who has stand tells us that God declares the end from the beginning. That God has a unique ability to see the end and that he declares the end even from the beginning. And this is not only true for God, it must be true for any visionary leader. That means that in building people, you must be able to have the end picture. I was meditating on this a few days ago while preparing my notes and it just occurred to me that many times as leaders and as ministers of the gospel we keep teaching 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 and that is profitable but uh, first 
ourselves and people that we seek to teach do not have a building, one of the reasons why the structures are built almost as exact as you see it on paper is because there is first a paper representation of the finished structure. Are we together? No one just begins to build adding block upon block and then just hopes that as they build, they will understand what they are doing. Usually you will not have a very wise structure, a strong, stable structure built that way. So the architect in partnership with all who are involved in construction would sit down and using the power of knowledge, creativity, imagination, they will come up with an intelligent structure, putting all of the factors that need to be in consideration. Are we together? And right from before the cornerstone is put, the first block is put on ground, there is already a picture of the end. And that picture is not a secret. It is known to both the architect and the client that they are building for. Are we together? And the knowledge, the awareness of what the finished structure will look like is what gives the architects the same power to meticulously follow to details. And then will give the client the patience to allow the builders do their work. Are we together? When there is no awareness of how the finished product will look like, impatience becomes imminent. So if you're building a 12 or 20 or 30 soul of that within a month or two months, he knows that no matter how dexterous that architect, that builder is, because of the nature of the product, the structure that they seek to produce, it will take a while. There are many things that need to be put every step of the way. Hallelujah. And I thought that it was really very important for us to understand that week in, week out as we meet, God is not just bringing random knowledge. There is an exact spiritual house you are becoming. Hallelujah. There is a kind of believer that God seeks to make out of you. And it's important that you know that he's not just interested in you being a Christian. He's not just interested in you being a religious person, a churchgoer, an attendant, a congregant, a member, perhaps a fan. God desires more than that from you. His intent is that you be built in a specific way. There is a kind of believer that can advance the purposes of God. There is a kind of believer. Are we together? Just because you are a believer, having received the life of God, does not automatically make you usable. It takes a lot to furnish and to build, to chisel, and to make you become a believer with stature. Are we together? And I thought to just do this, um, perhaps just to give us a picture. What kind of believer is Koinonia building? I think I should do that just for a few minutes, and then we get to part two of a believer. The Holy Spirit, in partnership with the teaching ministry, is producing out of your life. That way, you will be patient. That way, you will be determined. That way, your heart will remain first and foremost spiritually vibrant. Your spiritual vibrancy is God's greatest goal as far as building and making you become a believer with stature spiritual vibrancy men and women who are passionate lovers of jesus and lovers of the things of god this is the first kind of believer that god seeks to build it's important you get this your spiritual growth your spiritual progress your spiritual vibrancy in order of priority is god's highest goal as far as building you up is concerned to become a passionate lover of jesus not just a religious fanatic but a sincere passionate lover of jesus and then a lover of the things of god and that includes the house of god that includes the program of god number two god seeks to build in this house and through this house a believer with character very important character what does that mean that you are you you sustain a growing determination to be like jesus in experience a growing determination you are a man of character indeed not just because you hold true certain 
positive traits and virtues. It takes more than that. This is beyond just being positive about life. There must be a growing determination in that believer that I want my life to be a reflection of the Christ in experience. He says, my little children of whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. Things that we do, a believer that is of character, that you become the closest representation of Jesus to your world. Number three, what kind of believer is God building in and through this house? Number three, he is building intelligent and trans should have sustained an appreciation that spirituality does not take away intelligence. In Isaiah chapter 11, when you read verse 2 and verse 3, after listing the sevenfold operation of the Spirit of the Lord, verse 3 says, He shall make thee of quick understanding. Hallelujah. It takes intelligence to reflect Christ. It takes intelligence to live out the purposes of the kingdom in experience. So God is raising intelligent and transformed believers. What does that mean? Believers who have a thorough understanding of the word of God. A thorough understanding of the word of God. Alongside, listen carefully before you write. Alongside the ability to apply the word towards a victorious life it's not enough to just know the word of god you must sustain the intelligence and the understanding to apply the word of god towards a victorious life there are many believers that have supposed spiritual knowledge so many kinds of information spiritually profitable but they are not able to translate their knowledge of god and their knowledge of the word towards a victorious life knowledge is 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 truly a waste until you are able to translate it for your profiting and the profiting of others so when we talk about an intelligent and a transformed believer I'm reminded of the scripture that says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. It says in all wisdom. It should not just be in abundance, but it must be mixed with wisdom. Hallelujah. Most believers shelve intelligence. Believers whose propositions about God is not desired by the nations. And the reason is because they have not seen the word you claim to know and have and understand produce a wonder out of you. Are we together? Number four, what kind of believers is God raising? Please do not forget, this is a very, this is a very beautiful introduction. What kind of a believer are you becoming week in, week out? Number four, God seeks to produce responsible, purpose-driven and effective, purpose-driven and effective believers. Responsible, purpose-driven, and effective believers in my humble submission i think that this is one of the major challenges with the context of christianity in africa it does not capture this dimension where people evolve to be responsible to be purpose-driven and to be effective we numb away the passion for efficiency and most people are not pro-kingdom they do not have a goal and an intent nothing drives their life it's a terrible and dangerous, even destructive way to live. Destructive to you and to anyone around you. Hallelujah. Purpose-driven, responsible, and effective believers. Number five, what kind of believers feed themselves? The relevance of light is that it illuminates the room. The relevance of salt is that it gives taste and preserves something other than itself. I will never advocate a Christian experience that makes people small-minded, limited, and without any societal relevance. It is the reason why, nation, the more we, we are not able to see the, the imprint of the God life that we claim to have. Crime still remains. All kinds of vices still remain. You know, maybe some unbeliever, non-Christians who are just passionate about learning and they want to just sincere, fitable way. 
Imagine if, for instance, a government organization now says, we are going to allow Koinonia to be aired on national TV every time. Will Nigeria become better because they are listening to us? Or are we just going to produce another group of fanatics with no purpose, no vision? You see, blind fanatism is characterized by enthusiasm and devotion. The extremist groups across all religions that destroy nations. Extremism is one of the major plagues in the world today. And extremism comes from um, fanatism without purpose, fanatism without balance. Are we together? So whether it's from the Christian side or non-Christian side, any religion as this may apply, you find out that most extremists that destroy people and, and kill and maim and do all kinds of things at the back of that mayhem is a destructive orientation that because of maintained followers they translate followers to become leaders and leaders into agents of change hallelujah so don't carry this mindset that i'm just coming to change All glorious God, we praise your name. We lay our crown and worship. Pray, Koinonia. Oh, be lifted above all other God. We we have authority in and to Christ Jesus and that authority has afforded us the opportunity to manifest greater works number three that the reason why we must believe in the greater work agenda is that we have access to the Spirit of God hallelujah access to the Spirit of God and the Bible lets us know in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 that we receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon us and that he empowers us to be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost part of the world. Hallelujah. And I did explain the concept of greater. Perhaps I will repeat it again. That the reason why Jesus used the expression greater was not as though he was limiting himself but I told you that reason number one was because when Jesus walked upon the earth all that he could do he did it alone are we together that now we have the advantage of efficiency because the spirit has Instances of resurrection as captured in the Bible. One is Lazarus, the second, the son of the widow at Nain, and then the third, the centurion's daughter, Jairus's daughter. 
Hallelujah. Even before Jesus arrived, the raising of the dead was already something that was being practiced by the prophets. So when he talks about greater works, you can be sure that he does not just refer to greater miracles than me. I told you that there was one miracle Jesus could not perform. And that was a miracle of giving eternal life because that miracle would demand death and the blood it would demand resurrection ascension and pouring his blood in that heavenly tabernacle so as he did he could not perform it before the cross so when he says greater works you are now empowered to do something i could not do whilst i walked upon the earth he healed the sick he multiplied bread he performed all kinds of phenomenal miracles but there was no mention of him giving salvation darkness Fence it comes it must be from the depth of your heart there must be zealous and not effectual it will only be a waste of time effectual prayer is only as it submits to the word of God the word compliancy of your prayer is what makes it powerful are we together so he says the effectual and fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much availed much that means it has great profiting when a righteous man who knows how to pray based on scripture because i have taught you in this house that as mighty as god is he limited his dealings with man to the boundary of scripture that means god cannot deal with man outside of the provision that scripture allows are we together dealing with god outside of the provision of scripture will not secure his attention that he has submitted to his word even above he has submitted he has exalted his word even above his name so the form mark 6 2 the force of wisdom as the second spiritual force that must be in place for any believer who desires to manifest greater works the bible says on the sabbath day when it was come he began to teach in the synagogue and many hearing him were astonished saying from whence had this man these things and what wisdom is this which is given to him that even such mighty works are wrought by his hand there is a relationship between wisdom wisdom that comes from above and mighty works you cannot separate mighty work. application of knowledge wisdom is the accurate application said in our world that knowledge is power i disagree knowledge is potential power it is knowledge that is understood and applied with intelligence that becomes power hallelujah so wisdom is the accurate application of knowledge another definition wisdom is the ability i said last week and provide solutions to life's problems that is the supernatural ability to use both the written word scripture and the inspirings the fruit of wisdom is seen in the quality of decisions that are taken are we together you know where wisdom is functioning by the superiority and the quality of there are four kinds of wisdom as revealed in James chapter 3 and verse 15 James number one it tells us there is earthly wisdom wisdom that is a product of your being alive on the earth are we together yes human wisdom common sense we call it number two there is sensual wisdom another word is scientific wisdom wisdom that is a product of experimentation you keep building hypothesis until it is established as a theory sensual scientific wisdom academic wisdom the third kind of wisdom is called devilish or demonical wisdom wisdom that is as a result of your fraternity with spirits that are not the spirit of god it is possible that a man can possess the ability to make certain decisions and not by the spirit of god we see that clearly in the book of Acts, where a lady who was possessed with the spirit of divination, she was prophesying accurately. How be it not by the spirit of God? Acts 16, when you read from verse 16. 
that a damsel was possessed with a spirit of divination spirit a spirit that is outside of the spirit of Christ may seem to make temporary progress it is called devilish wisdom hallelujah and then finally the Bible tells us there is wisdom that comes from above there is wisdom that comes from above supernatural wisdom that comes by the spirit of the living God this is the kind of wisdom and the dimension of wisdom that if and when possessed and accessed by the believer evidently your life will produce greater works may that be your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ do not forget that I said you see the excellency of wisdom by the quality of decisions that you make we do not decide consequences unfortunately consequences are connected by default to decisions so you don't choose consequences you make choices and decisions and with those choices and decisions the corresponding consequences connected to them become your lot automatically that means that when you look around your life and you find out your life is plagued with failure defeat pain regret negative decisions it goes to tell you that there is bankruptcy of wisdom and we all need wisdom wisdom is a very profound gift a treasure that is needed and required by all men for destiny actualization and then even for greater works Jesus in Luke chapter 2 and verse 52 the Bible says he increased he grew in wisdom in wisdom Jesus himself increased in wisdom then in stature then in favor with God and with man are you seeing the protocol there that even before he opened up for favor he accessed wisdom because everything favor brings wisdom preserves if the only thing you pursue is favor you will keep having things that you will lose because wisdom is a preserver so part two will be a continuation of wisdom and then we'll take it um, there's a lot tonight receive grace to hear and understand in Jesus name wisdom what are the benefits of wisdom I think I should just state that most believers do not appreciate the benefit of wisdom in the life of an individual who presses to have it at work in his life number one wisdom strengthens and secures Ecclesiastes 7 19 Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 19 the Bible says wisdom strengthened the wise more than 10 mighty men which are in the city powerful that wisdom can secure you more than 10 mighty men which are in a city in fact one of the versions I think amplify or thereabout will say wisdom secures more than 10 mighty rulers so he's not just talking about ordinary men he's talking about rulers and villain generals can you imagine that wisdom is greater than 10 mighty rulers with their experience put together wisdom that comes from above truly secures number two ecclesiastes 7 and verse 12 wisdom protects and wisdom preserves it says for wisdom is a defense watch this and money too is a defense but the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom gives life to those who have it give us amplified let's see the justice that amplified did for that it says wisdom is a defense even as money is a defense but the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom shields and it preserves the life of him who has it he's telling you the difference that wisdom can bring defense even as money can bring defense but the difference is that money cannot preserve the life of the person who possesses it if money could preserve the life the rich fool would not die because he had a lot of money but no wisdom and the first proof of wisdom is that you acknowledge that there is a God in heaven because only a fool will say in his heart that there is no God are we together wisdom preserves number three Ecclesiastes 10 10 wisdom brings efficiency popular scripture wisdom brings efficiency to your life if the iron be blunt 
and he do not wet the edge, sharpen the edge now, then must he put more strength. But wisdom is profitable in that it has the ability to direct you towards an efficient life. I can tell you sincerely speaking, it's an uncomfortable truth, but a hard life is directly traceable to the absence of wisdom. Hardship has an explanation. Wisdom brings efficiency. Wisdom brings efficiency. Wisdom brings efficiency. Hallelujah. Let's go to the third force. Are you ready? Force number three that is responsible for the manifestation of greater works in the saints and is much needed especially because of the days that we now live in is called the force of faith. Please write. The force of faith. The force of faith. There is no believer who seeks to manifest greater works as desired by Jesus Christ who will ignore walking by faith and walking in faith. The Bible has a lot to say about faith. Number one, Hebrews 11 and verse 1, it says, Now faith is. I like Paul. Now faith is. The substance, he says, of things hoped for, he calls it the evidence of things not seen. The substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Verse 2, it says, For by it, this force called faith, elders obtained a good report. And when you read all the remaining renditions down to the end of that verse, they, th those were the good reports that were obtained by faith. In fact, if we go to 33, 33 begins to give us a... A, a very intelligent representation of these reports. Through faith, they subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions. 34. It says, quench the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, once valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Look at this. Women received their dead to life and it says others, though they were tortured and had the opportunity to accept deliverance, by faith they refused. They refused deliverance because they wanted to obtain a better resurrection. 36, it says others who had trial of cruel mockings and all of these things, the Bible says all of these things, they were called elders and they obtained good report by faith. Let me give you two reasons why we need faith. In our walk with God number one the first reason why every believer needs to understand the subject of faith and then to walk and live by faith is because there are realities beyond the scope of our sight beyond the scope of science please write there are realities beyond the scope of sight and beyond the scope of science Colossians 1 16 to 18 there are realities beyond the scope of sight. That means what your optical eyes can see and then beyond the scope of science. The human nature is trained scientifically and trained environmentally. Hallelujah. These are the two principal ways by which we are trained to understand and to deal with our environment. There is environmental conditioning and then scientifically from the time you begin to go to school, formally or informally, you begin to learn how to use the techniques of science to relate with your world. But the truth is that there are realities beyond the scope of sight. There are realities beyond the scope of science. Even science agrees that the human eye, which has 20-20 vision, cannot see everything. Are we together? It is very possible, I don't know if it has happened to you, that a very small insect will bite you, you feel the pain, the pain is real, but you cannot, you almost cannot find the insect biting you, yet it is there. And it is not like it's a demonic thing. It's just too small for your eyes to see. You usually use the direction of the pain to investigate that most likely it is there. There are many, many things that the eye of man cannot see. There is a limit to which the vision of man, 2020 we are told, are we together? 
you may need to take advantage of a telescope to see beyond certain ranges so there are realities beyond the scope of sight and beyond the scope of science colossians 1 16 please it says for by him were all things created that are in heaven follow carefully and that are in the earth visible and invisible so there are things visible and there are things invisible please note that invisible does not mean unreal our concept of reality is anything the frame of our eyes our ears our hands and all of that our senses can relate with but there are realities beyond the scope of sight and there are realities beyond the scope of science the bible says visible and invisible things for instance the realm of the spirit is a real realm that when all is said and done it is that realm that most people are going to live in so we are given an advantage of duality of realms you have a spirit or you are a spirit and then you live in a mortal body and that mortal body gives you access to the earth are we together but you are not a body your body as you have been taught is just an instrument of execution when people die we call it death but the realm of the spirit never calls it death because our idea of death is to cease to live but that is only correct from our realm from the realm of the spirit when you say someone has died they look at you with shock and wonder because there is no such thing as cessation of living we see that in scripture are we together the rich man and Lazarus scene one the rich man is there enjoying his prosperity and finances Lazarus is there suffering and then sin two both of them die and we see that they were both alive in another dimension one in Abraham's bosom the other one was perishing in hell and he was crying he had intelligence his intelligence was still with him deep water in your finger and please quench my thirst and that was not possible and he said all right please can you allow the man to come back to the earth and preach to my brethren that there is something i need to change about my life and my ways and he said no they have moses and they have the laws let them listen to them there was intelligent communication when jesus stopped breathing in the earth as we know he did not cease to live he went to hades the place of the dead satan being a spirit is alive jesus being a spirit alive the departed saints that he preached to according to the gospel of peter peter taught us in his epistle that he preached to the departed saints they believe and he led them together it was a triumphant entry are we together when he resurrected from the dead the bible says graves of the saints that were once departed were open and the people came out and walked all through the streets of jerusalem this may be a word of comfort for someone the moment you see your loved one close his eye or her eye, never to open it again, find comfort. It was just the body that stopped his assignment here. But life is real, more real. It is difficult for us to comprehend this because you were not given the privilege of consciousness before your arrival here. Consciousness began for you when you wore this mortal body. So it's difficult for you to relate with the reality of that realm, except and unless God gives you the privilege of visionary experiences. Supernatural and visionary experiences can train your spirit to at least a bit to understand how the realm of the spirit works. Are you understanding me so far? Yes. We need to walk by faith because there are realities beyond us. Would you believe if I told you that there were angels all around this place? You don't have to wait until someone is shouting and you say, oh, truly there are angels. No. The Bible says so, you see. Because the faith is based on what God said. The very foundation of faith is built upon the person and the speakings of God. Let me repeat myself that the very foundation of Bible faith is built upon the person of God and the speakings of God. What regulates the entire faith economy in the spirit is what God has said. If you extract what God has said, there is no possibility for manifesting Bible faith again because Bible faith must have a basis and that basis is the word of God.
John 1 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God verse 2 it says the same was in the beginning with God verse 3 it says all things I like this were made by him the word and outside of his influence and participation was not anything made that was made the second reason why we need faith and we need to walk by faith as one of the forces for commanding greater works is that faith commits God in the affairs of men. Faith commits God in the affairs of men. This is profound. Faith commits God in the affairs of men. John eleven forty, that it has to do with your conviction. Jesus said unto her, Sayeth I not unto you that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Your walking in faith and your walking by faith has an implication in that it commits God in the affairs of your life. And as you know from scripture, that the moment God gets committed, Luke 137, to the affairs of men, impossibility vanishes. It says, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. Faith has a unique ability to commit God in the affairs of our lives. You want to do greater works? It must be by faith. And I've taught you here that faith, number one, represents your confidence in God, who God is and the integrity of his person, your conviction, your persuasion, your confidence. Number two, faith is the action that you take as proof that you believe God. The action that you take as proof that you believe God in order to commit him as touching the affairs of your life. So when it has to do with Bible faith, two things are involved. Number one, your conviction, your depth of persuasion about who God is and the integrity of his person. Number two, you must take action, actions of obedience. Jonah took action. But his action was in disobedience so it's not just blind action you must act according as god has directed if it be thou bid me come and he said come if the guy sat back that will be action but not action of faith most people act but act in disobedience if god says go left and you go right you are not walking by faith albeit you are you are acting but not by faith Are we together? Are you seeing that the entire economy of faith depends on who God is and what he has said? So the foundation for Bible faith as you have been taught is to find out what God has said. What has he said? I refer you to my message, exceeding great and precious promises. A compendium, a capture of everything God has said that provides an advantage to the believer in Christ. Ephesians 1 and verse 3, the Bible says that God had given us, had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Please hear me. If you do not learn to walk by faith, you will be limited. You will be crying and blaming God, whereas supernatural blessings are on their way coming to you. Just because you cannot see it. I gave an example last week. I hope you still remember about someone who would leave Lagos. Was it last week? Yes. That if someone took a flight from Lagos and you were waiting for the person at the airport coming to Abuja, did you know that a 50 minutes flight and for about 46 to 47 minutes of that flight from the time it lifts, you are not going to see the plane. Yet you are aware and you believe, you are convinced that the person did not die in the sky. is on his way coming and you are there standing. Are we together? Occasionally there might be a, a, a delay, maybe some minutes. But then you see the plane and then it arrives. When you are going home from Koinonia, did you know that for over 98% of the journey you do not see your house and yet you believe it is there? What makes you believe that the house has not disappeared now while you are here? You believe that the food you left in your kitchen is still there waiting for you. Am I right on that? This is not word of knowledge. This is experience. 
Hallelujah. Where else should the food be? Are we together? <laughs> By faith. So when God says, Deuteronomy 28, 1 and 2, that it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command you this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above the nations of the earth above how many nations Koinonia, please answer me above how many nations do you believe that above all the nations and you see while he's saying that you are looking at the fact that you do not have a job while he's saying that you are looking at the fact that you do not have you know maybe some kind of qualification and yet he does not change what he's saying because of your condition powerful at any given point in your life there are at least two reports that tear you and your destiny at the face it is up to you to choose whose report you would believe this is the character of faith there are men sitting down here I was so blessed by the testimony of the dear lady feeling pains and having pains and I like the fact that she took responsibility to at least go to the hospital but that did not stop her from releasing her faith Bible faith produces Bible faith produces Bible faith produces ladies and gentlemen what you call koinonia today by the grace of God is a product of faith there are no guarantees in life nobody gives you any guarantee anywhere we live in a world that is obsessed with guarantees unfortunately it does not exist calling your uncle your guarantee is a risk in fact calling yourself your guarantee is a risk calling the harbalist in your village a guarantee is a risk because when men sleep, only God wakes men. There is something that is common to all men. The moment they sleep, the herbalist must, be, must receive grace to wake up to continue what he's doing. I lay me down and I slept. The psalmist said, I waked for the Lord. Waking people is exclusive, is exclusively the, the, the prerogative and the office of God. No devil anywhere, I can tell you that. So when people act as if they have your destiny in their hand, tell them, make sure you don't sleep. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. By tomorrow, if you are still there, call me another name. Hey, be careful. Be careful because the sun is going down. Be careful. Mm. Very arrogant world that forgets that there is a God that rules over the affairs of men. Have you forgotten Nebuchadnezzar? A man who believed that he had everything, the entire globe in his hand, and he could manipulate the destinies of men. And he said, make the fiery furnace seven times hotter. And they threw those young boys there on account of their trust and their belief in Jesus. They said, we are not taught to dishonor authority, but as touching this one, we are not careful to tell you, our God will deliver us. But even if he does not deliver us, we count him faithful. And they saw the fourth man in the fire. Hallelujah. Now, I don't know if they themselves saw the fourth man. Because the Bible does not seem to record that they themselves saw the fourth man. We know that the man who saw the fourth man was the king himself and the other people. All we know is that they believed that the fire had no power over them. The faith was on their own part because they were not, they didn't have to see the fourth man to enter the fire. And most likely while they were in the fire, they probably did not see the fire. You see, when you are walking by faith, usually it is those who are the onlookers who will be seeing the marvelous things that God is doing. You just know you are obeying God. You are in that fire and you are walking that fire out. You are in that den of lions and yet it has no power waiting who will not enter the fire when you see the fourth man already waiting it is easy to give when you have an alert of 10 million in your account then you smuggle out 1000 and say god you see what i gave you is that really faith that is charity are we together
He said, through faith, Abel offered. How about Abraham? I will make you a father of many nations. No evidence, no Isaac. And the Bible tells us, as in the order of men and women, he had become very old. And Sarah, even, even when she had gone past as in the manner of women, the Bible says, and yet they counted God faithful. You find that in Romans chapter 4. That he wavered not. I like Abraham. He wavered not. Please find that scripture for me. Romans 4 and verse. Look for it. Verse, I don't know what verse that is now. That he counted God faithful. Are we together? He considered not the deadness of Sarah's womb. Are we together? Verse 20. Thank you. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. In fact, back down, go to 18. 18. It says, who against hope? Do you see that? The foundation of faith is that there is hopelessness already. Hopelessness against hope. Believed in hope. That he might become the father. Imagine if you saw Abraham. 90 years. Abraham, how are you? And he says, I'm still holding on to God's word. And you say, Abraham, you are still at this madness called Christianity. I know he spoke to me. It's not a lie. And he himself will go to God and say, God, why are you doing this to me? Seeing that I go childless. Okay, here is Eliezer in my house. You somebody in my house who respects me to have children for me. And God says, no, it will come from you. I will hold on through the storm and I will hold on to your word my life will soon reveal you're the lifter of men the lifter of men yes I will hold on through the storm I will hold You're the lifter of men, the lifter of men. Koinonia, hear me. It does not just pay to serve Jesus, it pays to believe him. I don't know what he's told you. I don't know what he's told your family. I don't know what he said concerning your health, concerning your ministry. He saw the prevailing circumstances when he said it, and he does not plan to change what he has said. It's up to you to believe his report. Hear me. At every point in your Christian experience, you will, be, you will be met by at least two conflicting reports. The reports of men. The reports of ill health. The report of society. The report of the present day economy, globally speaking. Or whose report? God's report. The integrity of God as captured in scripture. You're a man of God here, yeah, Apostle. Where will the bills come from? You are a parent, school fees has been increased multiple folds, rent increased multiple fold. The amount to buy your house to do whatever it is. Perhaps you are here struggling with all kinds of things, and your faith is really shaking. Can I tell you? I know a God who is merciful and kind faithful and gracious you know that song i'm the apple of his eyes the i like this part The message for you here is hold on. God is still as faithful as you've known him to be.
don't allow negative situations so this is how my life will be i thought by now a job would have come i want you to still hold on in the name of jesus the devil is a liar i thought by now the health i i i i, I prayed i submitted my prayer request and i thought by now i'll be free i want you to count him faithful count him faithful you're not the first to go through what you're going through he's called faithful and true Please sit down. You want to command greater works? Man of God, waiting for a destiny helper to bring all the money for you be before you begin to pray and plan to have the building. You will never build anything in your whole life. Hmm. Start writing the budget with zero naira in your account. Start. It's an act of faith. Are we together? Be careful about this over this scientific approach to Christianity. Now, science is important. I just acknowledge science. But over dependence on intellect can rob you of an opportunity to walk by faith. Can I tell you, no matter what you are getting from God, no matter how cheap it is, if it is God that will be the giver, faith must be required. Faith. God will route you through a path that will, that will demand that you believe him. So he says, follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. He says, and Abraham, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Is someone learning? We must obtain grace to walk by faith. Anything God tells me, I believe him. I don't wait until I see any evidence. I believe him. Koinonia is a great nation. I believe him. You are going to raise mighty men after the order of Genesis 17 and verse 6. This is what God told me. And I believe with all my heart. Genesis 17, 6. I will make thee exceeding fruitful. And I will make nations of thee. And kings shall come out of thee. This is what God told me. He didn't say it yesterday. He didn't say it last year. He didn't say it 10 years ago. Waiting until you see the evidence. You will only waste your time and not walk by faith. Dare to believe God. Dare to obey God. Dare to act in keeping with what he has told you. And watch the God of wonder. The God of wonder arise for you. Every testimony you see shared here is the end point of the journey of faith. The end point of the journey of faith. Usually when you start, you start with nothing except what God has said. The raw material for your destiny essentially is the word of God. If he has said it, it's sufficient to start the journey. The same word that caused you to begin the journey will keep the things you need somewhere in your path. If you never take the step, you will not meet what you need in the journey. What you need for the journey will not be given at the point you start. Uh -uh. The only thing that will be given at the point of the journey is the Holy Spirit and the Word. That is sufficient for the journey. And you start one step after the other. Falling down but standing up. Getting up. Oh God, what is this? I don't understand you. You promise me that you're going to take care of me. You ask me to come down to Abuja. Now I'm in Abuja. It's been six months. I don't even know where my next meal will come from. And you hear a word from the Spirit while you are praying. Turn your pain. Turn everything you're going through to praise. I am giving you a testimony that will bless people tomorrow. And in the midst of your tears, you may not know what to do. And you are taking the time to pray and say, Lord, I still count you faithful. I thought by now a job will come. I thought by now destiny the helpers would have arrived. But I say thank you. Can I tell you, when you thank God in the midst of storms, you really have faith. When you thank God in the midst of your result, that is praise report. But when you are thanking God when you have not seen anything. Hallelujah. Learn to thank him. We live in a world that prides in complaining. God, you have not done this. You gave me tea, no bread. How am I, how am I supposed to take it? And God says, you just keep thanking me and taking the tea with gratitude and bread will arrive. The force of faith let's hurry up number four are you ready for the fourth force 
Is God helping someone here? Am I speaking to people who will begin to manifest greater works by the Spirit in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God? Are you ready for force number four? The force of wealth and abundance. Please write. The fourth force that is responsible for commanding greater works is the force of wealth and abundance. Mm. Zechariah 1.17 The force of wealth and and abundance cry yet saying thus saith the Lord of hosts my cities through prosperity shall be spread abroad and the Lord shall yet comfort Zion and shall choose Jerusalem scripture number two Deuteronomy 8 18 but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God hear what the Bible says for it is he not it is it it is he that giveth the power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant which he swear unto thy fathers as it is this day can i tell you wealth from time immemorial has always played a major role in shaping civilization promoting evil or promoting righteousness let me repeat myself again that wealth and abundance from time immemorial has played a unique role of promoting shaping civilizations promoting evil or promoting good when you see evil in a society and a territory behind the ever increasing decadence of any society is wealth playing a role a wrong role when you see advancement and civilization of any sort in any society behind it there is wealth playing its role when you see the purposes of God being advanced from place to place behind it there is wealth playing its role either ways whether you want to promote evil or promote good wealth is a tool that must be present and evident I have learned from scripture and I can tell you sincerely by experience that the absence of financial resources will cripple your life, will cripple your destiny, will cripple the program of God. Let me show you a scripture that might interest you. Matthew, John chapter 12 please. John 12 from verse 9. Be patient while I read. John chapter 12 and verse 9. The Bible says, much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there. Okay, no. Matthew 28, my apologies. Matthew 28. Let's go to Matthew 28 from verse 1. I'm reading the scripture for another point. Okay, now we have it. At the end of the Sabbath, watch this. As it began to dawn towards the first day of the week. This is the resurrection morning. Mary Magdalene and Mary and the other Mary came to see the sepulchre. Verse 2. And behold, the Bible says, there was a great earthquake for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. Three. It says his countenance was like lightning and his raiment was white as snow. It says, and for fear of him, watch this now, the keepers, the guards that were put around the grave, the Bible says they did shake and they became as dead men. Five. It says, and the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. Uh -huh. He is not here, for he is risen. Hallelujah, as he said. He says, come, see the place where the Lord lay. Seven. And go quickly. The angel is giving them an instruction by God. Tell his disciples. So the angel is saying, listen, don't keep quiet about the fact that he's risen. Announce it that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth forth before you into Galilee, and ye shall see him as I have told you. Verse 8. And they gathered, they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples' word. 9. And as they went to tell his disciples, watch this, the Bible says, Behold, Jesus met them. And he said, all hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. 10. And then said Jesus unto them, be not afraid. Jesus is now mandating them. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee and there they shall meet me. 
11, reading to 15. It says, now when they were going, behold, watch this. Some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priests all the things that were done. That means those who were at the sepulcher, right? The guards. They came and told the chief priests, listen, we witnessed something spectacular. We saw an angel came. It was not a vision. He rolled away the stone with great power. And the Bible says, when... Verse 12, and when they were assembled with the elders, when the chief priests heard this, they said, wow. They knew the truth. They knew the gods were not lying. But the Bible says they assembled themselves together. Look carefully and had to take counsel. And they gave what? Large money unto the soldiers. They called the soldiers and said, come, this resurrection if the whole city knows it, they will be obedient to the faith. This is literally going to bring an end to a civilization and start another. But we are going to do something. Take large amount of money. And with that money, here is the instruction. 13. Say this, that his disciples came by night. You see how powerful money is? Say his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. 14. And if this come to the governor's ears, don't worry. Because it will get to the governor. Don't be afraid that you say you were sleeping. We will have a way of covering you. He says we will persuade him and secure you. So they took the money. What do with the money? They took the money because they had wives and children. They had bills to pay. And instead of the 10, 10 naira salary, now a large amount of money just to lie. Who is the Jesus relative to my children's school fees? Who is that Jesus relative to my wife's trouble that I'm looking for 10,000 naira? Now you bring me 20 million just to make a little lie and say he did not resurrect with speed. Give me. Are you seeing, number one, if those guys were bad people, they would not even come to report it. They came because the thing troubled them. It was from a standpoint of conviction. Conviction is at the mercy of prosperity to be stabilized, to be guaranteed. Your conviction will shake like a leaf if you are not empowered. One moment they come and they are saying the truth. And they say, come, 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 come. We have to announce that he is not risen. Let's finish that scripture. When they were assembled, 13, let's go to 13 media. Okay, and it says, saying to the disciples that they came and stole him, 14 now. It says, and if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. Read verse 15, please. Ready? One, two, read. So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. Longevity of lies promoted by money. That there are people who went to hell today now. There are people who are in hell because a group of people paid to make sure they don't get life. Do you know Satan is still paying people today to say Jesus is not risen? There are many people, many of our children across the globe today learning all kinds of things sponsored by the abundance of financial resources. I will repeat it one more time for your hearing koinonia. That the name of Jesus is very heavy. It takes financial resources to lift it high so that the nations will see. Out of all the strategies to stop the manifestation of the name of Jesus, Satan decided to choose the issue of finance. Please do not downplay it. I was teaching the workers and also our school of ministry students that when you remain in abject poverty, three things must happen to you. One, you must steal. Two, you must tell lies. Three, you must borrow. One of these three things, usually all three, will eventually happen to you if you are poor. It has nothing to do with whether you are good or bad. It is the consequence of not being empowered economically. For instance, if you don't have the money to pay your rent, even if you're a sincere prayer warrior, chances are excellent that when your wife and your children are about to be kicked out of the house, you wouldn't know when you will beg your wife to say, please, tell them I traveled. 
I will tell God sorry later on, but for now. And you will feel bad, and yet you will repeat it again. The bondage that poverty puts men, it will take God to open your eyes to see it. I have told you that every time we advocate wealth and abundance is from a pro-kingdom standpoint. Don't approach it from a carnal, mundane standpoint, just fueling lust. This is not what we're teaching. But I can tell you that among the many tools that must be present in your life, first to live a life of dignity, then to advance the purposes of God, and then to fulfill Genesis 12, 3, that in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. You will not be able to do greater works if you lack resources. That is the truth. The force of wealth and abundance. I used to watch the great crusades of Reinhard Bonke, the great crusades of Billy Graham, and they would pack stadiums. And I know that usually when we watch those crusades, the central point is just Billy Graham coming, but you need to have an understanding of the budgets. Are we together now? By the privilege of God's grace and by reason of what I do, I can tell you that it takes serious amount of money to do anything meaningful for the kingdom. Souls are expensive. It takes resources to bring them to the cross. The gospel is free, they say, but the means to take it to the lost is not free. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Takes a lot. There are many people today who have relevant teachings, messages that can shape the body of Christ, can help us come into a greater level of stature and understanding, but they cannot publish those works because they are incapacitated financially. Am I right on that? There are many parents today who have been given the responsibility of raising the next apostles and prophets, and they know by the Spirit that God already told them that your child is going to be a mighty tool before I return. But to take that child to a good mission school a responsible school where he can be prepared for destiny they want to do so but they do not have the resources to make it happen it is terrible to know what to do and still be limited because of finances I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus the son of the living God that which limits men incapacitates men financially and makes your life a representation of mockery and shame may it live your life from tonight Hallelujah. Please be seated. I've done several teachings on finance. I want you to lay hold of them and listen. One of them you may want to pay attention to is the series, The Power to Get Wealth. I want you to settle down. I'm not teaching on finance. I'm just introducing it as one of the irrefutable forces that is responsible for greater works. Can I tell you, when money enters the hand of a man, whose heart loves God and who has wisdom and vision, you will watch the wonder of kingdom advance through that person. Let me repeat myself. When money, financial resources, enter the hands of a man whose heart is passionately in love with God and who has wisdom and vision, you will watch how far he will take the program of God. There are many visionary people today, great people, but are limited, limited financially, limited financially. This vision is excelling today by the privilege of God's grace because there is a mandate from God. There are faithful and wonderful workers, but I tell you sincerely, I'm speaking to the whole world and you know this is true. What you see is also riding on the wings of huge financial resources without financial resources there are many many things that will not come to pass hallelujah it takes money to raise your children properly it takes money to make a choice of a good school that you can be sure of what they are learning especially in this wicked world today are we together education has become so expensive globally speaking and that includes our nation. And I'm telling you, I don't mean to make you feel bad, but have you sampled children and see the difference in their understanding 
as a result of a good school and a bad school. I greet, I'm always around children and sometimes my heart breaks because you will see a child of four, five, six years old who has had the privilege of being mentored by parents that God has helped financially and they've provided that leverage. And then you see other children with a heart that is sincere. You know there is destiny in these children. But you see that because probably their parents or their guardians were incapacitated financially, the difference in intelligence, the difference in acumen, the difference in understanding is clear. And these poor children will grow with low self-esteem. That's why they start joining cult by age 13. Since they are intellectually weak, they will want to join a cult or a group where the person can now become a capon. If I don't have understanding, at least let me have the ability to kill. Do you know that consult with any military personality and they will tell you most of the terrorists that inflict mayhem in this nation and across the nations, most of them are from teenagers into their mid-twenties. How many old people have the strength to do all these kind of things? It takes strength to serve even the devil. And the devil will not make do with people who are too weak and cannot be effective. And so he goes, he literally looks for a demography, an age range, and captures them. But in the name of Jesus, we are here on a mission to redeem all that the devil has plucked. That the devil has chained families, chained breadwinners, chained destiny helpers using the tool of poverty. He has programmed it to even be transgenerational so that all the disciplined, godly, serious, just young men in certain families, they never get to rise until you fraternize with him and meet a herbalist. Then you find out irresponsible people now begin to rise. I'm praying for you. Every chain of poverty that has held your life, held your children in the name of he who died and rose again, may it be broken now and forever. <laughs> Hallelujah. With prosperity, when prosperity mixes with wisdom and vision, it does much for the kingdom. When prosperity meets with a carnal heart, a careless mind, a visionless destiny, an irresponsible personality, it becomes a detriment to kingdom come, a detriment to kingdom advance. There is no fear as to opening your heart to receive prosperity when you know your heart is right with God. Are we together now? Because it becomes an advantage. I look forward to times where God will raise certain strategic kingdom financiers. That there will be a group of men who will set up a company with the principal reason to fund the kingdom. Because they are so blessed, they don't need anything as far as their personal gains are concerned. That they literally build companies and corporations and many will come out of this vision in the name of Jesus Christ literally that they will sit down in board meetings and they are not just talking about sharing profits they are saying okay there is a crusade about to happen there how much 10 million naira. let it go there I hear that there is some missionaries they need to translate Bibles to Hausa and translate to French 10 million naira. let this one go for the kingdom I hear that there is some missionary that has been kidnapped somewhere and I hear that um, his wife and children are grounded no food please send a, a million naira. imagine living a life like that and heaven is watching you and saying who is this ambassador representing my purposes this much this is the assignment of money not I have a jeep, I have a car, I have houses. Thank God for those things. But we are people who have been trained to love God more than that. Hallelujah. Imagine one of you here that God gives you a vision to raise 100 children from primary school till university because you want them to love the Lord. You handpick them and God tells you, this lady you are seeing, this is Esther forming. This is Elijah forming. This is Daniel forming. Give them a chance. It's not their fault that their parents died. It's not their fault that their parents are idol worshippers. The parents will say, well, my child will worship the devil, but if you can pay for his school fees, carry him as a liability. And you say, no problem, bring him to me. Tell me who will ignore you when you go to a community and build 50 boreholes in the name of Jesus. 
50 represented 100 boreholes and say this community do read the history of the church in nigeria and revivals in nigeria those who came with the gospel also came with benefits that improved the lives of people and because of that they were the the communities were at the mercy of the permission that their kings will give them and because of the benevolence the kings will usually have a meeting and say this day i stand as a king over this community and i declare that as a community we will serve the lord and every other person follows suit when kings receive Jesus, their communities receive Jesus. Do you believe what I'm saying? Listen, ladies and gentlemen, among, among the many things you must open your heart to receive in this kingdom, in this season, is the, the prosperity package that God is dispensing to people who have vision, who love him. Gone are the days where people become an embarrassment to the kingdom because they are, God prospers them. They go ahead, they, they just, they change, they are not serious, no prayer, pride, all kinds of indiscipline. God is using certain people to mentor a generation, to show them what to do with money. Money is not about pride and bragging and making noise and saying, I am a billionaire, I am a millionaire. Listen, if you love Jesus Christ and you love his program and his purposes, being arrogant on account of finance is a total waste. It is not the way the kingdom works. The king's business is bigger than just trying to show you have arrived. People are not stupid. If you are blessed, they know you are blessed. Am I right on that? If you are here and you are trusting God or you believe you're a kingdom financier, can I tell you, if all you are doing is making noise and telling lies, I have money, God will not trust you. Because wealth in the kingdom is not an achievement, it's a trust. Let me repeat myself for your hearing. Wealth in the kingdom is not an achievement, it is a trust. He gave unto one five talent. He gave unto one two. It will look like you worked for it, but that wisdom came from God. That favor came from God. You can use wisdom to open a big mall, but it takes God to bring customers to you. Koinonia, don't be afraid of being prosperous. Did you hear what I'm saying? Let me repeat myself. Do not be afraid of being prosperous. Your fear of money will cause more harm to the program of God than good. The fear of money does not make you more spiritual. It is carnality, a heart that does not love God, a heart that wants to, when Satan comes to your life, it's not only your money he will use, he will use your whole life. He will manipulate everything God gave you for your destruction. But I can tell you, if people paid, what brought Samson down? I know you say it's Delilah, but it's not really Delilah, it was money. The Philistines called Delilah and said, listen, there is a man who has become a judge over Israel. This man has mysterious strength, mysterious strength, that one man can use the jawbone of a donkey and kill 3,000 Philistines. What army will stand before that man? We want you to please, we will give you money. Can you help us to find out the source of his strength and if possible, destroy that man for us? Ladies and gentlemen, what a lion could not do, what a bear could not do, what an army could not do. You would think a woman did it. It's not a woman that did it. Money is what did it. If they had met her and said, can you be a participant in our agenda? Go and kill Samson. She probably would have insulted them and walked out of that place. But when they brought money, she said, all right, let's sit down. Let's talk. What do you want? You want to bring down Samson? It's difficult to, how much are you going to give me? Because Samson is not just a, this is somebody that taught the lion. That means I can die in the process. This mission is a risky mission. If he killed the lion, I mean, use a business sense. She will negotiate as a businesswoman. You think she will just receive peanuts for the risk of killing Samson? You know what it takes to kill Samson? Find out how many times she tried and failed. Samson, the Philistines are upon you. And he got up and he said, you lied to me again. I don't know what, well, anyway, we'll leave that for another discussion. The most important thing is that Samson eventually went down. Are we together? Many times, do you know if Samson realized, I don't know what really happened to him. Maybe it was an attack. But if, if, 
Imagine, listen, listen, listen. Imagine that Samson eventually got angry and looked at her. A lion, Samson tore a lion, tore a bear, defeated the Philistines, removed the city gates, not the door to your house, the gates to a city that people use cranes to carry. He, he carried it and then went up a mountain, dropped it there. If you were asked to go and fight such a man, wouldn't you turn and look at the person who sent you and say, is this how you want to kill me? So imagine, but with all of that, when money came, he said, clear the way. Let me show you the power I have. I don't talk, but I move things. Money for you. And Delilah said, all right, since you brought the subject of money, I can take the risk. Finally, Samson revealed the secret. My glory and the power is in the covenant that is captured in my hair. Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He got up, the Bible said he shook himself as before. This time around, money had gone forth. And notice the moment they discovered after she shaved his hair, the next thing that happened was his eyes, not his hands. Vision was what was taken away immediately. His eyes were plucked out. When his eyes were plucked out, the devil did not want to remove the hand because he would still be useful for the devil. And you see what a great man, a judge, a man who was dreaded by the, some of the best armies in the then world, he became one who was going around threshing in the prison. He was bound with fetters and his assignment was to go and be grinding. Can you imagine? Reduced from a place of honor using the tool of money. I'm praying for you. Whatever has reduced you, to a place of shame and mockery reduce your family ordained for greatness but brought down because of the absence of economic resources may my God who is the lifter of men in this season that the church is stepping into in the name of Jesus may God prosper you for greater works may my God prosper you for greater works please sit down The force of wealth and abundance. Number five. Are you ready for the fifth force? The fifth force that is responsible for greater works. My God. I really believe that this word is entering someone's spirit. That you are getting there is a holy anger that is coming upon you. That when you get up you will coordinate all these forces and your life will become a sign and a wonder. The fifth force that is responsible for exalting and releasing Jesus, revealing him to the world, is called the force of influence. Write it down, please. Influence is power. The force of influence. The force of influence. Influence is power. Please write it down. Influence is great power. The force of influence. Influence, like money, are related. They shape civilizations. They define people's understanding. They define people's thinking. They define people's values at any given point. Can I tell you? Our world today is not just going at the mercy of time. Our world today is a reflection of the mindset of certain influential people godly or otherwise from technology to sociology to the language we use the way we raise children the way family is run are we together now the way ministry is run the way businesses are conducted civilization influence literally shapes civilization what does it mean to influence number one the capacity to have an effect Influence is defined as the capacity to have an effect on the character, perceptions, behaviors, decisions, and the values of another. I will take it again. Influence is the capacity to have an effect, whether positively or negatively, 
an effect on the character, on the perceptions, on the behavior, on the decisions, and on the value of another. When you have an effect on the character, the perception, the behavior, the decisions, and the values of another, you are exerting influence upon that person. One last time, the capacity to have an effect on the character, number one, number two, the perception, number three, the behavior, number four, the decisions, number five, the values of another is called influence. Please look up. This concept of influence is very powerful and is very profound because you see a handful of people historically and even now are the ones who are always responsible for shaping and defining the narrative of a civilization. Are we together now? That people, a crowd of people will usually model their lives after an individual or a set of individuals that they consider to be worthy of emulation. They call them all kinds of names, role models. Some will call them celebrities. Some will call them influencers. Influencers, some will call them, you name it, you know all the, the names. And unfortunately, some of these people have been positive role models in terms of bringing values that shape society properly. But many of them, sadly, have been very wrong and destructive models. There are children today who have no business learning certain things except that someone they admire. You see, the psychology of influences, the moment you like someone and he becomes a reflection of your aspiration you will copy everything you can see and find in his life good or bad because the assumption is that whatever he is doing since he has that result to show it must be right are we together so when satan wants to destroy a generation he does not go after everybody what happens is that he builds certain people through covenant backed up with excellence and an indoctrination that makes them know that they are pro-Satan, antichrist, vocally so. And then when he brings them, when that negotiation is done, then he will exalt them and give them the leverage of influence. Are we together now? And from that standpoint, they begin to sell certain value systems. And as ugly as some of those value systems are, you would think they should be so pungent and intelligent person should reject them. But never downplay what influence does to a man. Influence can make darkness look like light. Greater works on the wings of influence. There are many people today, did you know, once upon a time, have you noticed that generally speaking, we speak better, our, our generation communicates a lot better. Not necessarily because people have gone to more schools and learned, it's simply because the internet has afforded people a greater opportunity to hear and listen to communicators. And that has automatically improved people. You listen to our children, when you hear our children speak, you wish you were them. They speak intelligently, they will correct you, for I, I had a, an experience with one of our lovely children. I was calling everything that was round orange. So one time I was at the rotunda and I said, wow, this is orange. And she tapped me. She said, it's not orange. I can't remember the name she called it. And she was right. Ladies and gentlemen, O is for? That's what you were taught. Anything that is O is orange. But our children now, you can imagine, they will correct you and say, no, no, this is, this is orange, this is this one, this is this one. That is the level of advancement, courtesy influence. Children learn now at a remarkable pace because they have audiovisuals that help support their understanding. Pictorial representations of the things. Biology used to be a nightmare, chemistry, physics, but now children laugh while they are learning. When they fail, the teachers call them and say, were you in your right state of mind? Are you okay? We can repeat the test. You know what happened when you, when you were writing your test. You carry your result and start crying before you get home. Because you know exactly what will happen. And what you are expecting is exactly what will happen. I leave you to guess whatever it is. I will not say it. Oh, yes, you know. You, you knew exactly what was going to happen. 
Now results are released in e-versions. You don't have to wait, join any queue and do anything. I'm just saying that influence shapes civilization. Are we together? Very, very powerful and profound. It then means that if, we, if believers are going to do greater works, we must trust God for grace to ascend heights and realms where our life becomes visible and clear. Are we together? In an elevated platform where people can see the life of God in you. I like Jesus. Matthew chapter 5, 13 to 16 is the most concise capture of the confluence, the, the, the whole idea of influence. Jesus says it this way, ye are the salt, Matthew 5, 13, of the earth. Ye are the salt. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what salt is able to do. One pot of rice does not require one pot of salt to taste well. Are we together? Look at the ratio of the salt that must be added to a pot of rice to make it taste well. Say influence. So when you see a bag of salt and a bag of rice, you're not holding the same thing. If you mix them ratio one to one, you destroy that meal. Am I right on that? So, light is even a greater expression of influence because light does not have to be everywhere to shine everywhere. Just put it at one point and give it room to shine and it gives light to everyone in the room. It says, neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel. Watch this. The light is put on a candlestick and kept on a bushel and the whole room is illuminated by that light and Jesus says you are that salt don't say we are few don't say we are few five people who are salt indeed can rewrite the narrative of a generation am I right on that yeah five people and then he says you are light Look at the sun, as we know. Every time I use the example of the sun, I learn the power of influence. Did you know that if you ask the sun, what do you do about darkness? The sun will tell you, I have never seen darkness. I don't even know it exists. The concept of darkness is the rotation of the earth in a way that the sun does not reach it. But as far as the sun is concerned, from its creation there has never been darkness because from that standpoint isn't it brilliant when you are traveling especially transcontinentally you see the wisdom and the beauty of the sun that one moment you are living and it's night and then you are turning to the other side of the globe and then you are seeing the sun rising incredible profound you go to other parts of the world where at about eight or nine it's still bright and then all of a sudden the brilliance and the wisdom of God. No wonder he says you are salt and he says you are light. Most believers only know that they are believers. But God is transiting your understanding. Giving you an, an apostolic perspective that you are salt and you are light. Please say salt. salt. Say light. light. One more time. Say salt. salt. Say light. light. That means in the midst of 500 students... If you are the only one who is there, you are enough to create that change. Salt for you. The assignment of salt essentially is to add taste and then to preserve. These are the two principal assignments of salt. There can be a lot others, of course, but then to add taste and then to preserve. And you see, like I taught you here in Koinonia, it is never too late to add salt to a meal. This is the thing about salt. There are certain ingredients that if you do not add them on time, you have destroyed that meal. But even when the meal is already served at the table, you will still see salt. And if it does not taste, you can add salt and it does not ruin the meal. Profound. How about light? Remember my example that I gave you? 10 years darkness, a room with 10 years darkness, another with one year darkness, another with two week darkness. Imagine all of these rooms, they have been dark for that long. And then you connect them to a bulb with a central switch. As soon as you switch it on, which of the rooms will come up first? All of them at the same time. The longevity of darkness does not affect the effect of true light. 
just because the light has been off for 10 years as soon as you get it right and you fix it in that moment the light will come up Jesus says I am the light of the world for as long as I am in the world I am the light of the world koinonia hear me you are the light of the world you are not just Christians you are the light of the world the light of the cosmos the salt of the earth I believe in influence right from the time God started raising and building us I believed with all my heart that it is profitable for us and for the kingdom to attain a point of influence influence brings you closer to the corridors of power and authority and it affords you the opportunity to enhance positive changes Prophets in the Bible were people who advised kings. They advised nobles. Nobles called prophets my father. Why? Because among the many decisions that control their nations were their, their submission to prophets who brought to them the wisdom of God or the wisdom of other deities. I don't run away from the corridors of influence and power. I will not be corrupted and compromised by them. But I'm not one of those men of God who would chicken away. No, 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 no. Great men, big men, they are my friends. I will love them, pray for them, counsel them as much as they are willing to listen. There is a narrative in the church that seems to isolate the believer from the main activities within the cosmos. There is a history to that error. When you study the history of the church, I don't want to mention the name of the groups because I'm speaking to a global audience. But when you study the history of the church, once upon a time there was a group of people who believed that their idea of holiness and purity was being alienated from the mainstream activities of the church. And historically, that happened because during an emperor called Emperor, Peronero, there was persecution of the church. Believers were burnt with fire, they were put in oil, and all kinds of mayhem was being unleashed on believers. Are we together? And so, under the reign of Emperor Constantine, Bible history will tell us that victory, because of a revelation God gave him of the cross, victory was brought for his armies, and because of that, they liberalized the practice of the Christian faith and gave an injunction that Christians should no longer be persecuted on account of their faith. Now, those who, under the reign of men like Emperor Nero, if you were saved, sometimes you would not even last two, three days because they were living in the midst of persecution. So things like taking care of family, attending to other needs was not in their mind. It was just matiadom. But when that, that burden was lifted, the then believers did not know what to do with their lives. Are you seeing now? And so a few people said, look, we cannot sit here living useless lives. We love the Lord, but since we are no longer dying, we have wives, we have children, we have responsibilities. We're living in a society that we need to be part of, even though not compromised by it. Then a group of people now branched out and said, listen, we need to be involved in activities of commerce, activities of nation building. We cannot alienate ourselves. And that started branching different sects in the Christian faith. So the idea of alienating yourself from mainstream society as proof of spirituality is a repetition of an age-old error. An apostolic community must know that you are sent. Please say after me, sent. One more time, say sent. Send gives an idea of a forward movement that you are sent as light in the midst of darkness. Light is not profitable in light. Here's how it works. If you on your phone, let's assume, God forbid, that the light in this auditorium suddenly went off. You will have to make do with the light on your phone. Am I right on that? But when the light comes up, you don't need that lesser light again. You have to put it off. That's how it works. So when the world will have to manage the systems that they have that explain morality, that explain excellence like using a torchlight because the church that is the true light has refused to rise. So systems and policies that sometimes may not be pro-kingdom will have to be enacted and established as a midwife until the manifestation of the saints. But my Bible says, Romans 8:18. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Verse 18 says, For the earnest expectation of creation awaited the manifestation of the sons of God. If you are part of that army, shout a loud Amen. amen. Hallelujah. When you have the opportunity 
to rise through influence and have the ears, the heart of kings, and you can direct them aright. You see, this is the reason why before God will trust a man with influence, he will deal with your flesh and flesh must die. Do you know why? Because when you rise to a point of influence, you are now around and within the corridors of power and it takes a covenant walk with God not to be compromised by the glitz and the glamour that power brings. The challenge until now for the body of Christ is people who have been ill-trained and have not stayed to be properly trained and mentored, if they find themselves in position of authority, with all due respect, whether they are politicians or government people and all of that, they suddenly find themselves by whatever means in the corridors of power because they have not been trained. The Bible says in Daniel 1 and verse 8, it says, And Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat. He purposed a determination. Your will can play a role that in the name of Jesus, as I get to this office, I will not cut corners, I will not bribe, I will not give or take bribe. This is how I will show favor, I will help people, but this is how I will run my life. You can purpose in your heart. I give you a disclaimer. Integrity has a serious consequence because we live in a bedeviled world. So if you are planning to be a person of integrity, get ready to go through the persecutions that follow people of integrity and character. You will be termed a fool by many people. They will call you names and say you and your children will die of hunger. You don't know how this thing works. You would have manipulated your way and a billion naira will suddenly evolve out of thin air. But can I tell you, the Bible says, mark the wicked. Their end is destruction. That is why you find out many people who loot and steal money with all due respect, they get to a point where you find out their children cannot even rise to become anything great. And the children don't know what kind of cause is on them. Did your Bible not say the cause of the Lord is in the house of the wicked? But by all means, ladies and gentlemen, God is not just looking for good preachers. He's looking for men who will ascend the heights of influence and relevance because one-on-one -on -one evangelism will not get the job done. Thank God for one-on-one -on -one evangelism. But we're living today in a sociological context where it's not even safe to stand and do one-on-one -on -one with anybody again because you can corner somebody one-on-one -on -one and the person will bring out a knife and say, before you preach, drop your money and your phone. I've been looking for somebody that I will steal from. Thank you for making yourself available. And so we must be wise as serpents and gentle as doves. Jesus already told us that we are sheep in the midst of wolves. Are we together? Someone can blackmail you and say while you are preaching, the person can say you are an armed robber. You don't know whether the person just came out of a forest and then you are the first evangelist the person met. And you are trying to preach, whereas the memory of his being kidnapped one week ago, he can just shout and call EFCC or call the police. And if God does not help you, you are in trouble. So we must reinvent wiser strategies. I'm not saying one-on-one -on -one is bad, but I'm saying that we must invent more effective kingdom strategies of witnessing to people. And one of such, as proposed by scripture, is influence. Kingdom advances at the mercy of a healthy blend of evangelism and influence. Evangelism and influence. Evangelism and influence. Isn't it incredible that I'm standing from this point, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm talking literally to tens of thousands of people, potentially millions of people across the globe from one point. That is the power of influence thanks to technology. Don't reject influence. It is not just a tool to feel good. There is an assignment. Influence is a tool. There are many people who will love Jesus because they watch you loving Jesus. There are many people who will be responsible because they watch you being responsible. There are many people who will be frugal because they watch you model frugality. There are many people who will be men and women of integrity because they see it manifest in your life. I'm praying for someone here. On account of your desire to see Jesus glorified, may God elevate you to any platform required for you to serve him well. In the name of Jesus Christ if you need to be a CEO to represent him may that grace rest on you 
if you need to be given an appointment with some international organization so that you will be a model to nations that there are men who can serve God well I'm crying unto my God that in the name of Jesus may he begin to put you in strategic positions from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same your name is to be had please sit down right the key to influence is results the key to genuine bible influence is results ladies and gentlemen i hate to be a bearer of bad news but I announce to you painfully so that nobody will follow a man who does not have results. Nobody will follow an institution that does not have results. Nobody will be loyal to a nation, a people, a person, an organization that does not have results. Results here represent solutions. Solutions that better people. Solutions you can imagine. Some of the influencers in the world from a technological standpoint some of you have never seen some of the giants, the tech giants. You've never met with them one on one. And yet people dress like them, talk like them, bear their names. How many people today will fight to own the jerseys of certain footballers? Use jerseys. That's the power of influence. Are we together? Because you see, the human spirit was so designed, I've taught you, to find fulfillment when you make progress. And when you see people who model what you desire to become, it's usually a beautiful sight to behold. And chances are excellent that you will want to practice anything you think they are doing to have gotten to that position. Influence, results. Our generation is so vulnerable to influence. This is why God must raise models that represent the counsel of God holistically. Let's show the world what it means to be intelligent, blessed, humble, and yet loving the Lord with all our hearts. And let me tell you, when your heart is right, God will take the limits of your life and elevate you. You've heard me say it and I'll repeat it again. That the Lord told me many years ago that if you will see, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. Hallelujah. The question I have for you is that if the whole world were to model their lives after you, will the world become a better place or a terrible place? If the whole world were given a divine instruction by God that between now and the end of the year, December, everybody on earth from Europe to America, Asia, Antarctica, across the continents, you are the God's recommended model and everybody young and old, educated, uneducated, diplomats, academicians, intellectuals, family people, they are mandated by God to model only you for six months will it solve the problem in the world or will it add to the problem in the world make reference to my teaching redefining inheritance and then the teaching what seekest thou there I teach on the concept of fulfillment and progress and impact and one of the things I taught as a, the, a an inheritance is a good name at the end of your life your name can be a key or a padlock. I repeat, at the end of your life, to your children and to all those who look up to you, your name can be a key that opens closed doors or your name can be a padlock. The truth about it is whether you look at it politically or spiritually or generally, there are people today, if you mention their names, their names represent hope. When you mention people like Nelson Mandela, when you mention people like Mahatma Gandhi, these are people who their names exemplify hope. People can cry literally at the mention of their name because they are inspired by what they live for. There are other names like Satan when you mention. Am I right on that? At least let me mention the worst. Satan. Imagine someone calling you that name. And then he says, I'm joking. You will still be angry. Am I right on that? Why? Is it the spelling? Very beautiful spelling. But there is a terrible history behind that name. Is it S that is wrong? 
or A that is wrong, or T that is wrong. These are letters in an alphabet that were called, um, um, the, the letters of an alphabet, but that there is a history behind that name. I'm praying for you that if there is anything connected to your name today that at the mention of will, will represent pungency and make people say, over my dead body, may the mercy of God erase it today. I say it again, may the mercy of God erase it today. There are families today where individuals connected to those families have had to change the surnames. In fact, change the entire names. Do you know why? Because if they dare mention that name in certain quarters and certain circles, it can change their destiny indefinitely. Influence. Ladies and gentlemen, influence is beyond social media. Even though social media plays a great role because of the generation it ministers to. But I can tell you this. The greatest way to market anything is the truth. You have no fear if what you are advocating and communicating is the truth. The limitation with the social media space with all due respect is that it has provided an advantage for growth, for increase, for enlightenment but it has come with a terrible side effect that sells falsehood. Falsehood is literally a product and many keep buying it. One of the major products being sold out and is being consumed by people is falsehood. You can spend your entire life creating the narrative of a lie or living in a lie, selling a lie, being deceived yourself and deceiving others. That is the one demerit, unfortunate thing about the ill use of the social media space. It is a very profitable platform. It has changed the world, redefined civilization, but it is only most profitable if these ills, these side effects can be managed. Koinonia is not only a place of power and grace, miracles, signs and wonders, we have a mandate to also raise people of influence. And I'm telling you, you do not know the joy in my heart when I hear that God is giving people jobs, giving people promotions, elevating them. For me as a man of God, I don't just beat my chest and say, wow, my people are rising. No, 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 no. My joy is that vision that God has given, Genesis 17, 6, that it is coming to pass. And I'm praying for you. I will never stop. Even now, I'm saying it again. Any position you need to rise to, whether in sports, whether in media space, whether as a man of God, whatever kind of result your life needs to produce to give you an elevated platform may my God who is also your God lift you and keep you there and hear me for some of you who are already lifted there any power that wants to bring you down in the name of Jesus I call upon the God of heaven may he arise and tear down any altar that wants to bring you down I say it again, may my God arise and tear down any altar. Any man who has been elevated by God and any conspiracy by charms or hexes, spells or enchantments that said this man, this woman must die, this person must fall, this preacher must fall, this politician must fall. I decree and declare those altars are scattered right now. Hallelujah. There are forces looking for men of God to bring them down. You know why? Not because of the man of God. Because if such a great man goes down, the millions of people who believe in the person will also go down. There are many businessmen who many people eat because of their business. And you see, the strategy is this. When Satan sees that you are in an elevated position where your life matters to the well-being of many people, you become his principal source of attack. He will use anything human, systemic, demonic, spiritual, discouragement. Daniel! was elevated in Babylon and because of his position he was protecting not only the interests of God I'm not advocating fanatism listen to me the Christianity that I preach does not profit Christians the Christianity that I preach profits all men I don't advocate a Christianity that downplays other religions you will never hear me do that Jesus came and he fed 5,000 men the Bible does not tell us that everybody there was a believer 
I will never advocate a Christianity that is built on blind fanatism. Please hear me. If you're a politician here or you are anyone in an elevated position, God did not put you there to favor Christians alone. God put you there to favor all men. The Bible says be good to all men. Albeit, it says, especially they that are of the household of faith. Let the gospel and the kingdom profit from your life, but not from a standpoint of blind fanatism. There are many people today who have been wrongly mentored and they got to positions of authority and the only people they saw were Christians and they left other people, other non-Christians hungry. No, if you are put in a position, you are there, of course. Everybody will serve to reflect what they believe. But let me tell you sincerely, we are called to serve all men. When, I, when God grants us the privilege to do the things that we do, to prisons, boreholes, and the rest, we don't do it in consideration to whether who is a Christian or not. He sends the rain to the godly and the ungodly. There are privileges society must enjoy by reason of you being a child of God. Are we together? I have to say this because when you are raising people of influence, influence is a delicate product. You can use it to mislead people. I say it again, I will never advocate a Christianity that throws down other people. There are non-Christians watching me right now, watching from various places. And as much as we are people who are motivated by our love for Jesus, vocally so, unashamedly so, we have a responsibility of translating the kingdom life to a context that better society. If Abuja is better because of Koinonia, we are serving God properly. If only Christians are better in Abuja, we are not serving God properly. You believe that? When a road is built, it's not only Christians that will pass it. Am I right on that? When healthcare becomes a thing worthy of emulation, it's not only Christian patients that will be attended to. How many people are operated upon, they pray before they go to the hospital, yet is a non-Christian, probably sometimes someone who is not even, does not believe in anything, but that's the person who performs the surgery, and you submit your body to that person. This is responsible Christianity that you are learning. So please hear me. If you have any practice in your place of power that, that victimizes a certain set of people intentionally, that is not God's, that is not the advocacy of the Christian faith. All should enjoy the benevolence. All should enjoy you being there. I'm saying this because we men of God, with all due respect, we need to be careful to not put pressure on the people of influence that God has brought under our care. Leave them to serve with integrity and dignity. We can correct, we can advise, but never put anybody under the palm of your hand under the guise of spiritual leadership. We must allow God's people to serve. When they go wrong, we correct them in love. Are we together? And we advocate a Christian context that makes the entire society profit. This is what Jesus taught. That's what it means to be the salt of the earth, the light of the world. Hmm. Please be seated. Let me give you the last point and then we'll finish. Greater works, part two. I believe in influence. I advocate influence. God is raising strategic people and giving them these mantles and these graces, elevating them. There are tools that help an individual to become a person of influence, excellence, the fortitude to do your work or to surpass ordinary standards. Are we together now? I will not give a job to a Christian who is lazy and will cut corners in the name of Jesus and will not do a great job. No. If I have a road project and someone comes, if you're a Christian, you can secure my, my sympathy in all fairness and I'll do it without, I won't do it without any hiding or whatever. But then you must show me the excellence you are bringing to the table. Considering you will only become an added advantage when I have seen that your excellence will be worth the while. Let's not advocate blind fanatism that keeps destroying our continent and our nation. There are many people who have destroyed the lives of others in the name of Jesus. Bad roads in the name of Jesus. Bad buildings in the name of Jesus. 
and yet there are people who are competent and just because of biases of faith when you hear me speak like this I don't speak of myself it is the Spirit of God speaking through me hallelujah the church should profit from every believer that God elevates but in profiting we must not forget the fact that God sends us to minister to all men and that influence is enhanced by a life of excellence excellence if you are given a job do it well with integrity don't start eating the money before the contract is on no be disciplined do the job well the profit will come and when you you see excellence has a way of recycling opportunities to your life again there is nobody who lives what works when you are excellent and you deliver as a man of God, God grants you grace. People invite you for a conference. Do your homework. Don't stand there and just go and make noise and then pray that you are invited again. No. You pray but you study. Do your homework. Speak to the people with excellence. You will go back there again. As a banker, do your work well. A businessman, do your work well. You run a shop and a mall. You wake up by 11 o'clock and close by 3 o'clock. And your excuse is that I'm running to church. I love you sincerely, but that approach is a loser's approach. You can employ people, and that includes other people who may not be there, so that while you are in church, your products are still running and you are blessing people. Listen, I told you that the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is not just a spiritual platform. It's also an institution where people are reoriented afresh. In fact, it is the cheapest institution on earth because you do not need to ride jam to come to church. Age range does not matter. Quota of regions does not matter. You find your way from your home and come and sit down. And after two, three hours, you live a radically transformed version of you. The cheapest institution known to man as far as advocating change, transformation, and greatness is concerned. Let me give my last point. Looks like I'm giving a speech. We're still in church. This is Koinonia. This is not a UN conference. Hallelujah. The last force, and then we find somewhere to pray. Have you been blessed? The force of the prophetic. Greater works. The last force that I will give you that is responsible for manifesting greater works. And I'm going to be speaking over your life shortly. And in the name of Jesus, this grace will work for you. Yeah. The force of the prophetic. Exodus 17 from verse 8. The prophetic as designed by God has been a major tool that has shifted, changed the climate, the spiritual climate of territories. Men have come to bow to the Lordship of Jesus all through scripture, courtesy the prophetic. Every time people derail, every time a society and a territory plunges to any kind of decadence, it is very usual of God and it's his strategy to raise a prophetic voice. And I'll explain to you what I mean by prophetic. Because for us believers today, let me say that up front. The prophetic is not just limited to the office of a prophet. There are three dimensions to the prophetic and I will show you as we wrap up. But let's read Exodus 17 from verse 8. Watch this. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel at Rephidim. We're reading down to 15. The Bible says, And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men and go out fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. Watch this now. They are going to battle and Moses is saying, I will not be there fighting, but I have a role to play in the victory of Israel. Are we together? And Moses said to Joshua, verse, verse 10 now, let's go to verse 10. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, watch this, Aaron and Hor, three men, they went to the top of the hill. You would think that a serious battle were happening. Moses should come and join and fight. But Moses said, no, my role in establishing this victory is not to fight physically. I have a prophetic role. Watch this now. Verse 11. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. Look at this. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. What then was the excellency of the training? 
warriors are fighting and the victory does not depend on the dexterity of their swords or their skill in battle that someone is fighting who is not even looking at Moses and yet a man is standing and the position of his hand is literally defining the destiny of a nation 12 but Moses' hands became heavy can you imagine that? That is trouble for Israel. Moses' hand, the prophetic, became heavy. The prophetic became downplayed. And the Bible says, and they took a stone. Now watch this. You would think because Moses was tired, it would be logical for Aaron or Joshua, Aaron and Hor, to say, all right, Moses, go and rest. If it's all about the rod, we'll hold it. But the Bible says, no, it was not just about the rod. It was about the man. Are we together? They took a stone and put it under him and he sat. They invented whatever skill under God to keep that hand lifted because they understood that in the midst of swords, in the midst of skill, in the midst of courage, the prophetic still has a role to play in bringing the victory of a people. The Bible says, and Aaron and Hor stayed up his hand and one on one side and the other on other side and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun that's how long the battle lasted and for as long as his hand was lifted victory was clear 13 and joshua discomfited amalek and his people with the edge of the sword now this looks like a, a, a mystery now why are you telling us about joshua and the sword again but the secret behind the scene was a man's hand, a prophet's hand, ordained by God for the victory of the people. 14, let's finish up. And the Lord said unto Moses, he said, write this. When God says to write something, it means it's a pattern. Are we together? When God says, write, you see the same thing in Revelations, write. Every time God tells men to write, he's saying there is a spiritual pattern. Write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua for I will utterly put out the remembrance of the Amalek from under heaven final verse 15 and Moses built an altar there and named it after that experience as Jehovah Nisi Jehovah Nisi that name came out of an experience that your skill in partnership with the prophetic is what produces greater works Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen, you have been taught the value of the prophetic here. For the sake of our discussion tonight, very quickly, let me give you three levels. Today I wrote here, all believers can enjoy the blessings of the prophetic. Today, all believers can enjoy the blessings of the prophetic through these three channels. All believers can enjoy the blessings of the prophetic through these three channels. Number one, the Word of God. The Word of God affords all believers the opportunity to enjoy the prophetic. Second Peter 1 19. Second Peter 1 19. The first channel by which all believers can enjoy the ministry of the prophetic for their profiting is called the Word of God. It says we have also a more sure word of prophecy. So he calls scripture, the word of God, a more sure word of prophecy. That means if you never have the opportunity to meet any prophet one-on-one, -on -one, as it were, you are still not disadvantaged as it were if you have access to the word. That the word of God is able to midwife your accessing the blessing of the prophetic. Number two, the second basis for enjoying the ministry of the prophetic for the believer today is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has been given to all believers without reservation and his ministry affords you an opportunity to enjoy the prophetic. John 16 13 is God speaking to someone. John 16 13 how be it when he the spirit of truth is come the Bible says he will guide you into all truth. Are you seeing his prophetic assignment there? He shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. I like the last sentence. And he will show you things to come. 
So if you do not have the privilege of hearing Joshua Selman prophesy or speak to you, you have no fear because greater than Joshua Selman is in you and with you. Are we together now? It's good to receive of the prophetic ministry, but you must be careful so that you do not get into the idolatry of worshiping the prophetic above the word of God and above the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Every man of God that operates in the prophetic correctly is empowered by the Spirit of God who lives in you. So the Bible says that he can show you things to come. It is an advantage when you have a vessel that can bring guidance and direction, reproof, correction, instruction, and help you, exhortation like the Bible says. But that you are not at a disadvantage as it were if you do not have a physical personality that represents the prophetic. The ministry of the Holy Spirit can become that bridge and help you to know things to come. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 10, 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 10, the ministry of the Holy Spirit as a channel for expressing the prophetic, but God had revealed them to us. The revelatory dimension of the prophetic does not just happen because of a vessel. It happens also because of the Holy Spirit. It says, for the Spirit can search all things. There is no prophet that can search all things of God. Because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13, it says, we see in part and we prophesy in part. So the most accurate of any prophet on earth is still limited. Are we together now? But the Holy Spirit has the unique ability to search all things, even the deep things of God. Part of those all things are the matters that relate to your destiny, the matters that relate to your ministry, the matters that relate to your family and that when you pay respect to the prophetic ministry of the Holy Spirit you can receive and outsource that prophetic advantage courtesy the Holy Spirit and then finally the third which is the most common channel for expressing the prophetic is through the ministry gifts that we call the prophetic and by prophetic here it does not just mean prophetic office it just means everyone who either by call or by alignment has come to a position where they are able to communicate the counsel of God. There are prophets who are called of God into that ministry, but there are believers who have stayed with God and evolved into dimensions where their prophetic has been so sharpened. You will think they are prophets, but they are not prophets. The prophetic is a privilege of every believer. The same way everybody can cook, you have access to the kitchen, but there are people called chefs. Am I right on that? Yes. Those people are specialized. If you want to cook for kings and the rest, they are the people to call. But that does not mean everybody has the privilege of a kitchen and to cook there. This is how it is. There are people called into the office of the prophetic. According to Ephesians 4, 11 and 12, he gave unto some apostles. He gave unto some prophets some evangelists some pastors and teachers toward end 12 for the equipping perfecting maturing of the saints for the work of the ministry and for the edifying of the body of christ 13 to the point that we come into the unity of faith of the knowledge of the son of god unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ but know this for a certainty that if you ignore the prophetic, either the prophetic that comes from scripture, the prophetic that comes from the inspiration and the guidance of the spirit, or the prophetic that comes from the voices that God has placed over you, you will never be able to command greater works. Jesus, the first dimension of the prophetic at work in his life was the very fact that he was the word incarnate. He was the word himself. Yet, from age 12, he went to the temple to learn scripture, to find out the things that were written concerning him, to learn the law. Number two, the Bible tells us that Jesus himself, the Holy Ghost came upon him. Are we together? After he was being baptized of a man, a prophet again, called John. And then the Holy Ghost came upon him. He went to the wilderness and so on and so forth. And all through, John only met him once and did not meet him again until he died, as recorded in scripture. But the Holy Spirit remained with Jesus until the time that he was about to perform 
the substitutionary sacrifice where he had to leave him so that he would become sin. That's why the, the same spirit that came back on the third day and raised Christ from the dead, meaning he was not in him. Jesus would never have died with the Holy Spirit in him. When the Bible says he gave up the ghost, he was not just talking about the Holy Spirit left Jesus right from Gethsemane. He was not on the cross. He left Jesus right from Gethsemane. That was the cry he was crying. Let this cup pass over me. It was not the cup of death. He already announced he was going to die. For the first time, the triune Godhead will be separated. Ladies and gentlemen, the prophetic plays a powerful role when it is done within the boundary of scripture in preparing men and equipping them for a great life. I'm saying that because in a few minutes I'm about to speak over your life. I always used to see our father in the Lord, Bishop David Oedipo, and our father in the Lord. You know, the, the fathers generally, they were people who were really given to prophetic declarations. They would declare for hours, they would make a statement and the next thing declare. You hear our father in the Lord, Baba Adeboe. He would stand and, and just make declarations sometimes in the silence of his voice and make these declarations. And, you know, earlier in my life and in ministry, I always wondered why almost every statement they made, they must make a declaration, then continue, then make a declaration, then continue. And I said, wow, this is interesting. I got to find out that this prophetic you see is like a layer of possibilities that you release upon people. And it becomes literally, it's like simulating a spiritual cloud before you. And you shout amen sincerely. Are we together? Yes. Those men, I tell you sincerely, were not noisemakers. They still are not. They are people who have a covenant with God. They will make one declaration with understanding. And you will see doors open. Because the Lord performed, he confirmed the words of his servants and performed the counsel of his messengers the spirit of god and possibilities in the kingdom are at the mercy of speakings in isaiah ezekiel 37 you know the story from verse 1 down to 10 when you read ezekiel was in the valley that was full of bones out of the many activities that would have happened there i thought ezekiel would be given the mandate to go and look for the bones and gather them together like wood but he said no you don't need to do that you are a prophet i will tell you what to say that means every prophet must be told what to say. Just because you are a prophet does not mean you speak carelessly. We prophesy as we are commanded. That is why you will see results. Can I tell you, when you speak out of the flesh, God is not obliged to back up anything he did not instruct. One secret to embarrassment is ignoring God while you are ministering. You will say many things that will not come to pass. And somebody will be putting the track record together. One day they will show you like a report card. You said this, it did not happen. You said this one, it did not happen. With these few points of mind, I will never listen to you again while you are prophesying. And people have brought shame and reproach to themselves because we are under pressure to say what God is not saying. You call somebody out of pressure, you are John. He said, no, 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 I'm Victor. You have three children, I'm not even married. And we, you make a fool out of yourself. Of course, if you are learning safe journey, fail your way to accuracy. But make sure that there is sincerity in your heart. We have been commanded to bless. And this will do with authority. Because there is a grace that defends the speakings. Anytime God sends a man, he sends forth a grace. That is the reason why you hear prophetic declarations and you see what God gives witness. Acts chapter 4 and verse 33. The Bible says, And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Great grace. It takes power to give witness. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, if you desire to manifest greater works, the greater works that Jesus said you would do, 
translating to the salvation of men and nations, translating to the transformation of men and nations, bringing many people to experience the life of God indeed, bringing healings to nations, bringing prosperity to nations, shaping cultures, creating a civilization that is pro-Christ, pro-kingdom, pro-development, pro-advancement, then you need to subscribe to all of these forces. My assignment is to reveal them to you and then impart upon you by the Spirit the grace requirement to walk in these things. I conclude my teaching today by revealing to you a very profound scripture. It says, now that ye know these things, happy are you if you do them. The knowers are not the ones who have results. It is the doers. Now that you know these things, he says, happy are you if you do them. There are many people who will know, oh, tell them, tell them, I know these things. And yet it never, never works in their lives because they heard the word just like we did. And the word did not profit them, not be mixed with faith in them that heard it. In the parable of the sower and the seed, the Bible tells us that the soils are the heart conditions of men. That they that produce good, good, so, uh, good seed, that, that produce from the good soil, are those who heard the word and understood it. They put it to practice and it brought forth three dimensions of results. 30-fold, 60-fold, and a hundredfold. I don't know about you, but my destiny is pegged at pursuing that hundredfold dimension that I will evolve to the highest version of myself as he grants me the grace to serve the nations. This is my proposal to everybody. God is counting on you. Joshua Selman alone cannot get the assignment done. It is flattery to believe that Joshua Selman alone will make that happen. No. Our assignment is to prepare a vast army after the order of Gideon, blowing that shofar, and 33,000 people came ready to fight. But they were not prepared. And he said, all those who are fearful and cannot, are not ready to go, return back. And over 10 or 20,000 people return. And he said, God said, there are still too much. As much as I need a crowd, I need serious people. Second test. He said, if you know you are afraid, oh, return back to your house. A few people still returned. And then they got to the river. And he said, watch their approach. Those who lap and take it like dogs. I always wondered what that meant. He said, those who bow down and take it like men, drop them. You know why? Because a dog will never settle down to eat. It is always ready to move. That means those who see plenty and abundance are not, are not, are not distracted by that result. They are still in a position of continuity. Pick them. Those who settle by lying down to take it. In other words, the journey is no longer important. I have found abundance. He says, send them back home. And with that test, 300 men emerged. And that became the army that Gideon used and brought a revival against the Midianites. Ladies and gentlemen, if God is counting on me, then I obtain grace to not fail him. If God is counting on you, counting on your business, your family, your understanding, your influence, then make sure that you do not fail him. I have shared with you at least five or six spiritual forces. We are going to pray all these forces and then I make a declaration over your life and we're done. Please rise up on your feet. In one minute, I'd like you to mention as many of the forces that you recall and pray them into your life. Very simple but profound prayer as you prepare to receive the prophetic declaration. Go ahead. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, someone is praying. Go ahead and pray. As I announce again, the force of prayer in the name of Jesus, the force of wisdom, go ahead and pray it in your life. The force of faith, number three. The force of wealth and abundance. The force of influence. And finally, number six, the prophetic as a potent force that empowers the saints to manifest greater works. Someone is praying in the name of Jesus. My life begins to become a, a revelation 
of the glory, the power, the grace of God at a higher dimension. I have experienced God before. I have revealed His grace before. But Lord, empower me. Go ahead and pray. Greater works, O God. Salvation to the nations. Healing to the nations. You are a man of God, pray. You are a businessman, pray. Politician, pray. Academician, captain of industry. All who are watching, Zaria, pray in the name that is above all names. I obtain grace. I obtain grace. I obtain grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Now I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead, I activate every virgin dimension in your life that is required for you to rise and do greater works. Receive that grace now in the name of Jesus. Let the spirit of prayer and supplication like never before rest upon your life. I impart upon you this moment the spirit of wisdom. Receive it in the name of Jesus. From today, you begin to make extraordinary decisions that move your destiny forward in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare, God's servant Bishop Oedeko will say there is the spirit of faith and he came to a people, a generation as a representation of the spirit of faith that came from Papa Hagin and was imparted upon him. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, the faith that works, that moves mountains, may that grace be imparted upon you now. And I pray for you. I have taught you that there is a prophetic dimension to wealth. Wealth answers to value. Wealth answers to productivity. Wealth answers to relationships. Wealth answers to a lot of things, financial intelligence. However, we are not left without an advantage. I decree and declare the kind of wealth that your hand is here to handle. May my God, the giver of all good things, surprise you with it in this season. Number five, the force of influence. For some of you, by reason of this impartation, nobody has known you now. But between now and the end of the year, in the name of Jesus, let the grace for visibility rest upon you. Let the grace for visibility rest upon you. May kings hear about you. May nobles hear about you. May heads of government hear about you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The grace that announces your gift, the grace that announces your value, the grace that announces your contribution, whether in business or in whatever area, I decree and declare, everyone who is seated in the position of authority, who needs to hear about you, may the angels speak to them about you. May God use men to speak to them about you. Finally, in the name of Jesus, by the privilege of the apostolic and the prophetic, every door that has been closed over your life, stopping you from making destiny advancement, in this year of open doors, I command those doors be open now. Be open now. I place a prophetic word on your head that everywhere you go, let it compel men to favor you. Let it compel men to favor you. Hear me? Any long-standing battle that you have been fighting in the name of Jesus, as Moses lifted his hands for victory, I stand as a privileged servant of God and I lift up my hands before Jehovah Nisi. May that battle come to an end now. May that battle come to an end now. There are some of you who have not laughed this year. You have watched others laugh, 
but laughter has been far from you it's from one tragedy to another just when you think you are lifting your head another problem comes I say it again the Bible says and by a prophet the Lord God brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet they were preserved I stand in the name of Jesus the one who calls and anoints men I place grace on your life rise above every challenge rise above every limitation therefore koinonia I speak to you arise and shine arise and shine arise and shine arise and shine in the name of Jesus Christ thank you Jesus give Jesus a big hand clap it is done in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah give me an honor of making the altar call right now very quickly thank you for your patience you've been stretched today our time is far spent but I will still need to take a minute or two from you to give somebody an opportunity to make it right with Jesus remember the foundation for greater works is salvation what Jesus could not do before the cross now the new and the living way has been opened an opportunity for you to make it right with Jesus you are here and you are saying apostle whilst hearing you preach the Holy Spirit began to convict me that today is the day and now is the hour whether you are making a first time decision for Jesus or you are rededicating your life I have just one minute for you very boldly leave your seat carry your bags your Bibles whatever you came with and I want you to gallantly walk to the front don't wait for someone to be the first wherever you are if you are coming from the overflows please come let's celebrate them as they come there has to be someone coming to Jesus God bless you sir God bless you sir are you appreciating them as they come thank you thank you thank you keep clapping let's encourage them as they come just a minute to make it right with Jesus God bless you God bless you God bless you he says ye must be born again young and old male female Jesus is calling you hallelujah if you are joining them please come very quickly we'll begin the prayer now I appreciate all of you for taking the time and the courage to make it right with Jesus the Bible declares that as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away let me plead that you lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender and those who are making that decision in Zaria and our global family here's your chance to make Jesus Lord of your life say after me all of you together say Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your voice I have heard your word I believe that you are the Son of God I believe that you died for my sin right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior as my Lord and as my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight until forever I am a child of God I go from glory to glory grace to grace amen father thank you for these precious people they have made declarations of faith and thank you because you are faithful to honor your word in their lives therefore I call them recipients of eternal life and I declare that the grace of God to live a victorious Christian life is released upon you from tonight till forever you go forward ever and backward never in Jesus matchless name we pray amen and amen please let me request that you kindly move to my right which will be your left there are counselors waving the placard they will have a word with you and you'll be back to your seat let's honor them as they go koinonia <laughs> hallelujah praise the name of the Lord now just a quick announcement to our family in the east I'm in Enugu on Tuesday and Wednesday so all of you around Enugu and the regions please converge it's going to be a time of revival teaching signs and wonders I usually would visit this region a few times in the year and this is one of such times so please all the pastors all the leaders all who are part of this family within that region and all believers within that region please prepare your hearts um, the details will be on our social media platforms you can invite everybody you find and um, let's have a great time in the spirit come with hunger come with determination
to experience Jesus at another level. God will be releasing graces upon us and helping us to mature in the things of the Spirit. The Lord bless you, all of you who have come. Bishop, thank you so much. It's an honor to have you in our midst again. Thank you. Thank you sincerely. Let's share the grace together in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forever. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you and see you on Sunday. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.